guys. I organize a lot of camping trips for people, uh, for groups of people. In particular, I do a lot for a single parents group here in Brisbane. And probably the most common question that I get asked is, I've never been camping before, what do I need to bring? So there's a few videos out there uh, on, on what you need to bring camping, need. And uh, what I find in those is that even there, they expect that you've got at least $400 or more to spare. Now for a lot of people, $400 is a lot of money. Um, especially when you're thinking, just want to have a weekend away with the kids or on my own. Um, single parents in particular do it quite tough financially, most of them. $400 is a little bit out of reach and it makes camping not possible. It just doesn't happen. So you don't actually need a lot to go camping. And most of the stuff that you do need, you'll find that you've got lying around the house at home. And what you don't have, you can source really cheaply. Uh, places like Gumtree, the Facebook buy sell swap pages, um, eBay, places like BCF, Anaconda, Tent World. Uh, there's so many places you can source some really cheap gear from and you don't need all the bells and whistles. So this video here is all about camping on a real budget. So I think I work out about 200 bucks or less is what you can get away with. So let's look at the essential groups. So you're gonna need your tent, something to sleep in. You're gonna need your bedding, something to sleep on. You're gonna need your lighting in your kitchen, a way to cook your food, a way to see at night. And you're gonna need your, I guess, furniture for lack of a better word, something to sit on, maybe a little table. Um, and that's your four essential groups. And then on, on top of that, you also need your food. So if you have a look down in the description below, there'll be a link to a list. I'll put in there a list of every item that I think you need to go camping. Okay, so let's look at your shelter first. Now, there's a ton of tent brands and types out there, um, more than you can poke a stick at. They range anywhere from about $12 to well over $1,000. But all you really need, probably get away with about $30 to $50, depending on where you go to buy. I'd recommend avoiding single skin or single wall tents. Um, these can attract a lot of condensation inside the tent. And what I find is they also seep more water or have more risk of water seeping in when you contact the, the wall of the tent. So I'd recommend getting one that has a rain fly. Now the rain fly is a protective cover that goes over the tent. And what this does is obviously protects you from the rain <laughs> and it also gives a place to catch condensation that will then run down this external fly and not inside your tent. Now you can get a cheap tent from anywhere. Uh, BCF, Anaconda, even Big W and Kmart have some cheap tents. For example, uh, BCF have the Essentials 4-person dome tent for $39 or well, they've got the Wanderer 3-person dome tent for $79 or Big W, they've got the Hinterland four-person tent for $59. We can go a little bit more upmarket with the Instant Up Hinterland tent for $110. But they even have small tents, like this two-person tent here, I think for around $12. Now just be warned that if you do buy one of these two-person tents, understand that they are a single skin tent not, they don't have a rain fly <clears throat> and if you're unlucky like me with uh, this hinterland one that I purchased again for about $12 if you're unlucky like me you'll get a Friday afternoon tent what's a Friday afternoon tent I hear you ask well the guy who put this particular tent together I think it was late on a Friday afternoon he's thinking oh what am I going to do on the weekend oh, I've got to pick up the kids or I'm going to go play football or I'm going on a hot date. He's not really concentrating on what he's doing and what he's done is he's sewn the window on upside down. So I've got the Velcro up along the top, stitching along the bottom. What's the problem with that? Well, nothing except I didn't realize this until the first night I took it out. It was probably one of the most torrential storms that I've ever camped in. What happens when you've got an open window at the top? Sealed at the bottom, that's right. It turned my tent into a shower tent. Water was cascading down in through this window, all through the inside of my tent. It really was not pleasant. <laughs> okay, so whatever tent you end up going for, 
just remember rule of thumb is pretty much half the occupancy. So when it says four person tent, it really only sleeps about two comfortably. This two person tent here really only sleeps about one. You can sleep two in this, but you've got to be really good friends. Okay, so brands. Now, the price generally dictates the quality of the tent. Um, personally, myself, I prefer Coleman, but there's, there's a few other good brands out there. Oz Trailer, quite good as well. Um, really, just pick one that's in your budget that you can uh, that will fit what you need to suit suit your your needs. And the other thing to keep in mind is the pegs. So, most cheap tents will come with pegs like this. These pegs are useless. They bend, they don't dig in anything, they don't hold anything. They have no purchase in the ground whatsoever. Slight gust of wind and they're gonna come out again. What I recommend is grab some pegs about this size here. Sometimes, often you'll only need four of them. Um, maybe get six or eight, depending on how many cable or cords you've got coming out, tie ropes coming out of your tent. Um, but yeah, grab yourself some of these pegs. They'll hold your tent down to the ground a lot better. Okay, so another really great place to look for tents would be Gumtree, the Facebook buy, sell and swap pages, eBay. You can pick up some really cheap tents in good nick. Um, what you'll find is there's people who try camping, decide they don't like it, they sell their tent off really cheap and their loss is your gain. I've picked up some incredible deals on, on Gumtree and Facebook through things like that. Um, I've picked up tents that are worth $200 for $20 that I've only been used a couple of times. So I recommend checking that out as well. Um, do some Google reviews on the tent. You'll find out the specs, how big they are, the measurements. You can even find videos on how to put them up for most of them. Okay, so the, the last thing that you're gonna need for your shelter is a hammer. You probably got one at home. Um, if you don't, you could use a rock, you could use a brick, you could use even the heel of a good solid boot. Um, but if you do go out and buy a hammer, don't get one of those rubber or plastic mallets that you get at the, the camping stores. They're really not that much good at all. Um, you get far better strike from using a metal hammer. Go to Bunnings um, or somewhere like that. Grab yourself a good metal hammer. You'll hit the pegs in a lot quicker. Okay, so now we've covered your tent. Let's look at your bedding. This one again is really simple. All you really need is a cheap uh, inflatable air mattress. You can pick these up from Big W. So single ones, they're about $8. Um, it's probably about $12 for your, $16 for your doubles. And your queen ones, they're about $22. Um, they're as cheap as chips. Now you'll get people say that if you buy a more expensive one, it'll last longer. In my experience, they all develop leaks at about the same rate. So these inflatable air mattresses will not last you forever. Um, you can do things to extend the life of them, so if you don't put them out on the ground outside, if you make sure there's no sharp rocks or sticks underneath your tent when you set it up, uh, make sure your kids don't jump on it, so things like that, you'll get a good amount of wear out of these inexpensive little inflatable mattresses. But to go along with that, you're going to need a way to pump it up, because you do not want to be sitting there trying to blow these mattresses up with your mouth. Now, you can do what I do, I've got one of these... Uh, 12 volt ones that plug into your cigarette lighter in your car. You can pick these up from Big W for $19, I think. This one's lasted me ages. Uh, or you can get foot pumps or hand operated pumps. They're $10 at Big W, really cheap as well, just as efficient. Just means you're gonna have to pump with your foot a little bit to, to get the mattress up. But that's what you've got kids for, right? Sleeping bags. Now, sure, you can go and buy a sleeping bag, but we're on a budget, right? So. Just grab your pillows from your bed at home, your blanket, maybe a sheet or two. That's all you really need. You don't have to go out and buy a sleeping bag. Okay, some of these sleeping bags go up over well over a hundred dollars. Um, yeah, just grab your blanket and your pillow from bed at home and off you go. Okay, so we've got our shelter done, we've got our bedding done. What's next? Our lighting. Now everyone's got a torch at home, right? Worst case, that's all you really need. Um, if you want a little bit of extra comfort or a little bit of extra ease, I recommend grabbing yourself a head torch. Now I've seen these from Bunnings for around $4, $4.50, something like that. Um, cheap shops like the Reject Shop or Silly Sollies or uh, places like Coles, Woolies, Big W, they all have them. You'll pick them up for five bucks or thereabouts. Um, the one I use, 
It was off eBay, it's $15, but it's one of those super bright LED type ones that lights up a whole football field. But, um, but yeah, four or five bucks you can get away with for, for a head torch. The reason I recommend a head torch over a torch is because when you're doing things like cooking, uh, looking down, you want both your hands free. When you're eating, you want both your hands free. Head torch just sits on your forehead. Everywhere you look, you've got light. You don't need someone else holding your torch. Ever had your kids try and hold a torch for you? It's always over here, over there, everywhere. Never but where you want it. So save yourself a lot of drama, grab yourself a head torch. Okay, so this brings us down to cooking. Now you need something to cook on, you need something to cook in, and you need something to eat off. Now you can pick up these really cheap, these little butane stoves here. This one I've had for ages, it's looking quite old. But, uh, that's it there. You can pick them up from anywhere, camping stores, Big W, Kmart, they're about 20 to 30 dollars and they use these cylinders here. These are pretty cheap as well. I think you get about eight, uh, sorry, six of them for about eight dollars, something like that. Anyway, they just go inside here. Even um, got a self-igniter on them. So really good little stove, handy for camping, packs away small, sit it in the back of the car. It's small and light and they'll do, do most of the cooking that, you, that you'll have to do. All right, so next, you want to grab yourself a saucepan from home. Everyone's got a saucepan at home, right? Grab yourself some plastic bowls. Uh, now the saucepan serves a couple of purposes. It gives you something to cook in. Also gives you a way to heat your water. So maybe to do your dishes, maybe to have a cup of tea or coffee. Um, yeah, whatever. Okay, so depending on what else that you want to eat, you may want to grab yourself a fry pan as home, from home as well. Cook your sausages, your steak, um, fry up some veggies, whatever you want. All right, so your plates. So as I mentioned before, you got bowls, um, plates. I'd recommend either plastic or enamel. Um, the reason is they're not going to break like Mum's good china. So leave the china plates at home. Grab yourself some plastic ones um, or or some enamel ones. The beauty about the enamel ones is you can leave these beside the fire just before you're ready to eat. Warms the plate up, especially in winter anyway. Put your meat on the on the plate. Doesn't get cold from the uh, from the metal. But you can pick these up quite cheap in even in places like the Salvos or uh, Lifeline. Yeah, you can pick up some cheap cheap plastic um, plates and uh, enamel plates in places like that. Okay, and lastly, you're going to want some cutlery. Now, if you don't want to keep packing and unpacking your kitchen, you can do what I do. I went and bought um, a set of everything, put it in a little plastic box from Woolworths. But uh, grab yourself some forks, spoons, knives, a peeler. Um, what else have I got here? I've got a bottle opener, crab claw, uh, under here. A set of tongs, some matches, uh, egg clip, a pair of scissors, can opener. All this stuff you can get really cheap as well from, uh, so some, most of this stuff I got from the Salvos or Lifeline, op shops like that. Um, cutlery, 50 cents each, um, a dollar for some sort of tongs, a dollar for a can opener. You can pick it up really cheap and all that money goes back into the community anyway. So it's a great place to, to source some cheap stuff for camping that you can just leave in a box, leave in your garage. Every time you want to go camping, throw it in the car, away you go. Don't have to empty your kitchen out every time. So. Okay, next we've got uh, cups. So again, plastic cups. Don't grab the glass ones from home or enamel mugs as well. Um, you can drink your wine out of these, you can drink your coffee, your tea, um, anything you want. But, uh, and, oh, and again, enamel cups, you can pick these up from, from the op shops as well. I think I paid a dollar for this one from, from Lifeline or somewhere like that. So all of this stuff, oh sorry, all of this, this stuff, so all of this stuff you can pick up probably 10, 15 bucks from, uh, from Lifeline, you don't need as much as what I've got packed there. So remember, I'm I'm packing for an entire family of people. Chances are, you're just packing for yourself or yourself and a couple of kids. You don't need a lot. Okay, the other thing you might want 
you can go and pick up one of these little aluminium kettles for about 10-15 bucks if you want. Otherwise, just use your saucepan to heat your water. Okay, so next you're going to need something to keep all of that stuff clean. Now, you can grab yourself a plastic bucket from home. If you haven't got one at home, grab one from Woolies, Big W, Kmart, whatever. I prefer to use a metal bucket. The reason that I prefer this is because I can also heat this on the fire. So, fill it with water, put it on the fire, heat it up to do my dishes. However, if all you've got is a plastic bucket, use your saucepan or the kettle we showed you before, heat your water in that, transfer it into here also gives you a way to carry your water. So often you're not camping right beside a tap or a sink or whatever. You've got to bring your water from maybe from the creek, maybe from a tap that's 50, 100 metres away. Bucket works really well. Grab some dishwashing liquid, for, liquid from home. Grab yourself a sponge, a tea towel. That's all you really need. <clears throat> okay, so that's our kitchen and lighting cupboard. Next is furniture. 10 bucks from Big W, Kmart, maybe 15, can't go wrong with that. If you don't want to buy a chair, you can always sit on a log or a stump, maybe on your esky, even on the ground. Grab yourself a picnic rug and sit on the ground. Okay, so lastly in with furniture is a table. Now, I often camp without a table. I've never eaten at a table while camping. Uh, really, the only benefit that I find for them is when you're doing your dishes, you can stand up. Um, when you're preparing your food, you can stand up. So a little bit more of a comfort thing uh, than anything. Um, but yeah, what I did was I went on Gumtree, picked one up for 40 bucks, huge folding table. You can get some smaller ones. I've seen them as low as 10 bucks secondhand, 10, 15, 20 dollars. Uh, just depends on the size that you want, whether you even want one at all. But they can be a little bit of a of a comfort thing if you if you can grab yourself a table. Otherwise, just do things on the ground. Okay, so this brings us to our final uh, category, which is food. Now you'll notice that I haven't covered things yet like water bottles and esky, uh, because to me that comes into this last category now. Now you don't have to go and spend twenty dollars on a jerry can to carry your water. What I do. I grab one of these from Woolworths, they're about $4 for the, for the home brand one, holds 10 litres of water, tap on the front, perfect for, for your drinking water. As for your water for doing your dishes, usually find a tap at the campground or a river that you can get your water out of for that. Uh, as for your esky, do you need an esky? Are you even taking any food that requires to be kept cold? Now I do a lot of hiking and I can tell you now that you don't need an esky to go camping. Uh, but if you do want one, jump on to uh, Big W, Kmart, places like that. You'll pick up an Esky anywhere between $20 and $100, depending on what you need. I've got this one here, nice small one, does fine for a couple of days. Um, also have a much larger one if I'm going away for longer. But really, worst case is you're just going to have to buy yourself ice every couple of days because these things won't keep ice forever. Um, but you don't really need to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on a, on a big fancy esky or a 12 volt esky just to go camping for the weekend. Okay, so that's it. Now let's have a look at what we spent here. So what have we got? We've got 50 bucks for a tent, $20 for an airbed, uh, $4 for a torch, $30 for a stove, $8 for some extra cylinders, uh, we've got 15 bucks for the chair, $20 for a second hand table, $4 for the jug of water. Um, what else did we have? 50 bucks for an esky. So what's that? Maybe 200 bucks. Um, and you don't even need all of that. So you don't need the stove, you don't need the chair, you don't need the esky. Uh, a lot of campgrounds have camp kitchens. These things have got barbecues, they're fully equipped with microwaves, jugs, even fridges and freezers. Um, so depending on where you're going, you may not need any of that stuff. Also, Maybe you've got a mate like me. Now I've got about five or six different camping setups depending on where I'm going, who I'm going with, how long I'm going for. Everything from a little swag or the two man tent that you saw before, right up to a big three room, 12 person tent. Uh, maybe you can borrow a tent from a friend, a uh, friend or family member and, and, and save yourself 50 bucks there. Okay, now there are a few little extra tips that I'd just like to add here, um, things that you can pack. So, a towel, right? Now a towel. You might want to have a shower, you might want to go swimming, in which case don't forget to pack the togs as well, or maybe it just rains. 
So a towel is something that you can easily overlook and really handy item to have with you. Spare batteries for your torch. You don't want to be left out in the dark when your torch batteries run flat. Plastic rubbish bags. Okay, so not all campsites have bins, um, or even if they do, they could be 50, 100 metres away. Um, never, ever leave your rubbish at a campground. Always take it with you or put it in a bin. So pack yourself some plastic garbage bags um, to put all your rubbish into. Hats and sunscreen. Again, really easy to overlook. If you're camping in summer especially, you're really going to want those things. The other thing is toiletries, things like your toothbrush, toothpaste, some soap, um, yeah, whatever else you would normally, would normally use in your bathroom. Also, <laughs> toilet paper. Might sound silly, but I've been to campgrounds where they run out of toilet paper. You do not want to be left without, without that. So I always pack an extra roll of toilet paper in my, in my camping gear as well, just in case places like that run out. And lastly, uh, a box of matches. So you might want to light a fire. I mean, who doesn't love camping with a fire? Uh, maybe your little igniter on your stove breaks, you need a way to light your stove. Um, so yeah, throw in a box of matches as well. Uh, also with the fire, depending on your skill level, you may also want to pack some newspaper or some fire lighters um, just to help you get that fire going. And uh, lastly, a first aid kit. It doesn't have to be anything flash. If you don't know how to use it, you don't need to take it. So some band-aids, some Panadol, um, Nurofen, whatever, some painkillers, maybe a set of tweezers in case you get a splinter, um, maybe a bandage. But yeah, that's all you really need. Nothing, nothing flash and fancy. So that's all you really need to get out there and go camping. So no more excuses. Get out there. Now I know what you're thinking. He said food, but he didn't tell us what to pack. And that's probably the second most common question I get asked. What do I eat when I go camping? Now how do I answer that quickly and specifically? Well, I can't. I don't know what you like to eat. Um, I don't know what your, your taste buds are, allergies, anything like that. Um, I don't even know what you normally eat. So what I can do though is I can throw some ideas at you. Um, when you think about it, anything that you cook at home, you can cook on those little gas stoves as well. So <clears throat> I might do some other videos in the future with, with ideas on what to cook when you're camping, but um, some basic simple ideas. So breakfasts, what about cereal? Doesn't get much easier than that, right? Um, oats. Remember the saucepan that we packed before? Cook up your oats in that. Don't want to take an esky? What about powdered milk? You can use powdered milk for both of those things. Um, pancakes. That's another one that we do. The, uh, the what are they, $1.50 from Woolworths, the ones you add just to add water, shake them up. Um, to quote the movie, Talladega Nights, shake and bake, baby. Um, uh, yeah, you can cook those up or you want to go all out bacon and eggs. How about that? Um, you've got the fry pan that we added in before, throw on some, some bacon and eggs. Okay, lunches. A uh, common one that I always do is, or often do is sausages. Um, otherwise you can make sandwiches, um, two minute noodles. Uh, I don't know, what else do you want for lunch? I mean, those, those are probably the three main ones that I would pick from um, when I go camping. Um, salami and crackers, that's another one that I do for lunch uh, as well. Dinners. Okay, so to keep it simple, you can do pasta dishes in your saucepan, um, you can do steak and veggies. One of the things I really love to do is I get those little alfoil trays from Moore's, cut up all my veggies at home, put it in the tray with some butter, wrap it in alfoil, and I cook those on the fire. Uh, 40 minutes on the fire, usually 20 minutes facing towards the flames one way, turn it around another 20 minutes. Perfect, beautiful roast veggies. Um, but yeah, throw some steak on with that. Um, what else could you do? You could make a curry. Um, you could uh, you grab some even grab some tin of baked beans. Um, so many so many options that you can choose for dinners. Um, you don't have to oh, you don't have to have a camp oven. I do love making camp oven roasts as well. Um, but uh, I don't know. Just think, what do I cook at home? Can I cook this in a fry pan or in a saucepan? Chances are, yes, you can. Just don't take something that you need an oven to make. Watch out for some videos that I make. I'll make some, I won't call it gourmet food, but maybe bush gourmet. Um, I'll, put, I'll put out some videos on 
on different meal options for, for when you're camping as well. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, click like if you like it, click subscribe if you, if you want to catch some more content from me. Um, hit the little alarm bell in there as well so you get notified. Um, yeah, until then, until next time, get out there and go camping. So here's the little hinterland two-man tent. This one, just so that you get a better idea of the size of it. This is a, this has a rain fly that goes over the top. Film outside today, but check out the wind. <laughs>